Loki Season 2, Episode 3, Thoughts. This episode is called 1893. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG after Strikers. I implore you to do so, and then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. Back is killing me, might be talking fast during this video. So, the. Right, before I dive into the specifics, we are waiting for the. the there are some very serious allegations against. Jonathan Majors. So anything, anything positive I say in this episode, in this video, please do not misunderstand it as any kind of like I'm not praising him as a person. I'm only talking about the the acting and the writing of the character he plays here. But yeah, so to dive in, love the, the, this episode on several occasions has very jaunty music fitting the, the time and, and place. And it actually, even the logo at the start is actually this, this jaunty, yeah, really, really love that. That was, that was great. And also the fact that I, I, like at the very start and later in the episode again, Miss Minutes, is the, the you know looks the the way she we're, that we're used to, but you know Ravona points out you don't exactly fit in, and she like changes her she changes her appearance, and they nail like she one hundred percent looks like because if you look at like old you know really really old cartoons you know ob you have the obvious thing if she's in black and white but also like the really big eyes like if you look at really old like Mickey Mouse cartoons you know and the way the mouth moves again old Mickey Mouse just and and there's this sort of like slightly you know uh, unstable quality to it which was again really old cartoons had that kind of quality where today you know because of the way it was made and filmed and, and yeah I I really pre they didn't have to keep her looking like that for so long even doing it at all was you know but I'm here for it absolutely loved it um, why should she not get to to dress up fit fit the the time period and such this episode also really reminded me, I forgot how much fun Ravona Renslayer, was she this much fun in season one? She's always, don't get me wrong, the acting on point from moment one, you know, she makes a really strong first impression, but she was so much fun here, just, yeah, really, really glad to have her back and to see her in, in the first season, I don't think we particularly saw her in like, you know, non-TVA garb, so... Yeah, really great. She looks great in in the the you know outfit from 1893 Chicago. Now, uh, let's see. Also, yeah, I appreciate you know. Okay, so we by the end of this episode, we're halfway through this season. By the start of it, we're a third of the way through, and now we're getting an answer to where did Ravona go? But yeah, it is a very compelling answer. And let's see, yeah, and and you know the <laughs> also quite like you know Miss Minutes hiding, like you know they hear a noise, and she like actually physically hides, but just yeah, and and yeah, you know uh, Miss Minutes explains the plan, uh, you know. You you have to drop off this novel, this, this piece of literature. So that it may end up, you know, betwixt the, the digits of a young Victor Timely. The old handbook handbook. And, yeah, very, very clever. You know, she, she hands him that in 1868, and then in 1893, he's built, you know, a, a prototype of the loom and everything. And yeah, great bit with the hacking. Also, really great to see more of like Casey and Ob. Just you know, 
there's there's so much media that doesn't have a single like you know spectrum coded character and here we have two and they even get to and I, I guess they didn't particularly interact in this episode but they did in the previous one so I don't think I gave that enough credit yeah the way that our, our time travelers find out you know they, they yeah they hear about a news you know newspaper headline about a ghost clock so yeah that's pretty clear more of Loki and Mobius together. I, I really hope that they keep doing this for for the you know they they I they started out having the two of them just you know play off each other really really well in season one and then we got some episodes where that didn't really happen and they were kind of separated and then when they got back together it was like, well, you know, one of them's really angry at the other, so it's just not quite the same energy. I'm really glad to hear, you know, the, the Loki pointing out, okay, so we went to get snacks. Now, you know, then we went here, now we're here. How is this helping? You know, be honest, you just wanted snacks, you know. Let's see, and... You know, and the... And the, the then, then he actually, you know, talks about, oh yeah, it's, it's, dude, of course I know, you know, Norse mythology. Pff, yeah, Snackbeard knows Norse mythology. Yeah, right. But, but yeah, and and the fact that Thor, who's not that tall in real life, Odin, and then Balder, but not Loki, which is great because in the actual mythology, Loki is jealous of Balder. So, so that's a great, uh, just, yeah. Let's see, and, yeah. Um, really compelling performance as Victor Timely. I, I really appreciate how the different, you know, there, there are these idiosyncrasies to the various, you know, variants. The, you can, you can tell yeah, if, you know, even, even like, forget the, the, the costume and the, the facial hair and all that, you can tell apart the three versions of Kang that have gotten, like, screen time so far, not just the ones that have popped up briefly in post credits scenes and such. You can tell them apart. There's a very clear, you know, different, different mannerisms, different way of speaking, and, yeah. And, yeah, fun foot chase, and Sylvie catches up to them, and Victor Timely just straight up asks, what is going on? Which, mm, fair enough, the MCU has gotten real convoluted recently. I love it, but I get the complaint. The, the, but, but yeah, you know, Sylvie and Loki talking about you know, Kang and his variants, really great scene, and, let's see, yeah, loved Miss Minutes as a ghost, and I think Tara Strong, the voice actress, had a very fun time going boo and laughing and just, yeah, let's see, I, I agree with, with Victor, that definitely deserved applause. Let's see, and... Yeah, I, I quite like the the dynamic between Ms. Minutes and Ravona. No, you know, I, I could do without the, the jealousy thing. You know, I um I'll I'll direct you to I'll I'll put a link in the description box to, to Jesse Gender's video on it. You know, she also talks about this aspect of the episode with the the two jealous female characters and I don't really have anything to add to what she said and I do think you know yeah like the just straight up if Victor hadn't freaked out at the word partnership you know which like I feel like that's basically, it's a fairly 
typical joke about like a man being you know um, bad at commitment but yeah there are, it, it is true there are a lot of you know people who have you know done some really great things who can't really function well with other people including a partner Let's see yeah, and, you know, we get some, some, uh, yeah, Miss Minutes explains, you know, I used to be just a simple AI made for playing chess and repeating naughty words. And then we have the, uh, yeah, really, really compelling hearing, you know, we, we really get to appreciate why Miss Minutes because we did see that in season one, she really, like, it's more than just, like, oh, she, like, she's loyal to him. It's, it's beyond that, you know, it's more than just, you know, well, he programmed her, so she's going to be loyal. Let's see. And, yeah, you know, she brings up that he never gave her a body, and that is, of course, there are a number of science fiction stories and it is also a real thing you know once you have an AI do you give it a physical form uh, you know that that really changes things and yeah you know again like Victor Timely being like he's used to having control he probably didn't give her a body because he liked having more control over her he didn't want her to have too much agency. And I don't think it's the first time, but I had forgotten that Mobius refers to Ravona as Vone Von? Von. So I forget exactly how the, the tension, the emphasis on the syllable goes, but yeah, it's I get why he doesn't just refer to as Ravona every single time. That's a bit of a mouthful. And yeah, some really great confrontation scenes here. And yeah, very compelling when Sylvie is like very close to, to, to killing Victor. But, you know, he points out that wasn't me. I didn't do any of those things. You know, you don't know what's in my heart. And I really appreciate, because that is, like, it was one thing when she killed He Who Remains. He Who Remains did exactly what she thinks he did. And he wasn't, like, he, he danced around, but not around the fact that he hurt her. But Victor, he hasn't done anything to her. If she attacks him for what he might do one day, she's just as bad as the TVA for, for taking her prisoner. So I really appreciate I, I love when fiction goes and, and like puts a character in a really compelling you know situation. And I really appreciate the fact that she does end up backing down. You know, she hands him over. To, to Mobius and Loki, and then, you know, her revenge on Ravona is this, you know, she doesn't, you know, she, she says, you know, I've been obsessed with the idea of killing you, I, I imagined killing you so many times in such brutal ways, and, and, you know, you wanted a seat at the end of time, be careful what you wish for, pushes her through a time door which is kind of a, a theme a lot of lot of pushing through through time doors that's also how she got rid of Loki at the end of season one she's not the only character to do it but just yeah and and yeah you know I am I don't I hope they don't just let Ravona you know be stuck there you know you can understand why why Sylvie would think that's what would happen and it is you know yeah like 
what is she gonna do? You know, I, I, I actually, yeah, Eliath is still out there, isn't he? And even if he wasn't, how is she gonna get back? You know, so that is a very clever and and yeah, you know, they didn't. I mean, they they meant to kill Sylvie, but they were incapable, and they've chased her for years. And now it's like, well, you try being isolated and and not being able to to just live a normal life for for decades and decades. You know, like I'm sure there's something that she could find to to eat, but if she can't get away from there, yeah, that's a really bad situation. And Miss Minutes says, you know, I know a secret about you, but it's going to make you real angry. And, yeah, excited to find out what that secret is. And, uh, yeah, no post credits scene this time. Um, I thought the various uh, actors who were playing in, in this episode were playing 1893 people did a really convincing job. Um, Richard Dixon, one letter off from the the awful one, did a really great job as the robber baron, for example. And <laughs> the, the I'm guessing this is the big one that Loki teleports into the, the animal cage. Is apparently named Behemoth, which is appropriate. And yeah, just, um, I don't really have anything else to say. I'm, I'm glad that this episode didn't try to work in, like, a battle. You know, I there's a couple of confrontations, there's some foot chasing, but they don't fit in the, the kind of battle that we've seen you know, in in other episodes, even just you know, like yeah, the, the um, was yeah, second episode ended with you know a, a fight, a confrontation between a bunch of timekeepers and the you know the the major characters and such, and yeah, absolutely would not have fit this episode. So I quite appreciate. Uh, I like that Victor Timely you know when someone is about to hurt him he tries to to talk out you know he he doesn't just like like it would feel very weird if he like tried to fight back or if you know c considering the rest of the characterization and that does also really help distinguish him you know he who remains was mostly just toying with Loki and Sylvie Kang is a real, like, just, yeah, a, a monster, you know, ju just a really, truly terrible person. When he has power, he he's brutal with, with people. When, when he who remains is, has power, he's, like, toying with people. And Victor Timely, you know, the most powerful we see him in this episode is when he's able to trick some people into paying for an invention that doesn't actually work kind of thing. So it's a completely different, you know, he has a very long way to go before he becomes this big, which is, they also say that, you know, Mobius is like, I thought you, you said he was this horrible, you know, terrifying creature, and what, I'm, I don't see it, you know, so, yeah, um, I think that is all that I have to say yeah looking looking forward to the next episode